Well, I think at the time when the WIDA was started, it was the initiative of the United Nations University, in which the rector then Sajat Moko played a big part. And I was involved in it uh, initially as advising the UNU, and then later uh, being a consultant to WIDA. And uh, when I was actually concocting the name, I have to acknowledge that I have a responsibility there. Uh, I was concerned whether it might look like uh, a bit um, bit facile, uh, but uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the way of arriving at W I D E R uh, was signifying all the new development of economic research. Together, also implied something more, namely an approach which uh, has to be more welcoming to inputs coming from the other social sciences, to an understanding whereby anthropologists and economists can rub shoulders to understand that the engagement of economics and that of ethics are not, cannot be artificially separated. And I think that issue was very important then because people were concerned about development, but there was not really, I mean, development almost universally, the measure was GDP growth rate. Well, we wanted something wider, and wider did a lot to promote that broadening of perspective. Has something been achieved? Yes, quite a lot. Has WIDA played a part in achieving it? Yes, it has. Uh, many other things have been happening in the world as well. Is it still needed? Well, I'm afraid it's still needed because of the fact that the temptation to go back to the comfort of GDP measuring something measurable, give us something concrete, and then and don't talk about all these other wishy-washy things. That's very tempting, and lots of people fall for it. And you know, there are a lot of interest groups for whom a narrow view is right. I mean, it, for example, if you look at the Indian debate, it is very much in the interest of the business group in an immediate sense to fix the potholes on the road, to have the transport going, etc. And the idea of better education, it takes a long time. Skill formation, as Adam Smith discussed, may take decades, but that, from an immediate industrial point of view, that may not make a difference. So that, in the context of India, for example, in Gujarat, which has gone very much for physical infrastructure and continues to neglect education and healthcare, for the businessmen, it doesn't make too much difference, at least in terms of immediate concern. They get what they're looking for. They can they have a power going, which is important, and it is very important, all these are important. But to take a balanced view, you need a physical infrastructure, you also need a social infrastructure. Ultimately, you need capable human beings, capable to lead their own lives, and capable of participating responsibly and productively in the economy, in the society, and in the polity. So I think the entire approach that, um, uh, beginning with um, uh, Director Lal Jarvadana, who was the first director of WIDA, and many of us who were trying to advise him, I think of uh, other advisors like um, uh, Steve Marlin and, uh, and, uh, and others, and, and also a um, uh, uh, lot of the people working in WIDA at that time, like S.R. Osmani, we were very concerned about how make equity, make equity a part of the picture, not a detachable whole to the story of human progress. To see that human progress has to be understood in terms of what it does to the lives of the people, the well-being and freedom of the people, and to understand how the well-being and the freedom of the people feed back in making growth sustainable, not just environmentally, that too is very important, but also sustainable socially. <laughs>